first thing you always want to do when troubleshooting monitors is to try easy things. Many monitor problems are caused by poor cable connections or bad contrast and brightness. The per very first thing you want to do when beginning your troubleshooting is to check if the monitor indicator light is on or off. I'm going to use the computer. What the heck? It's not working. What's going on? Now, if it is the former scenario, it's most likely a bad cable connection, but it could also be a problem with Windows. The fact that the monitor has been switched off of its correct voltage setting. It could be a problem with the video card or the video card port. It could be a problem with some of the settings on the monitor. Or the monitor itself could have a bad LCD, in which case the monitor would need to be replaced. Want to use the computer? Hey, Suze, look here. Arhan, look. Like, <laughs> <laughs> the monitor doesn't turn on. No. If the monitor indicator light is off, you want to check that the monitor is indeed plugged in and turned on. You also want to check to see if the monitor cable is plugged into the video port at the back of the PC and the connector on the rear of the monitor. You'll also need to try a different monitor and different cable that you know are working to test the integrity of the computer. Besides the display flat out not working, there could be errors in the actual display where it still works, but the image is not as clear or functioning exactly as it should be. The first thing you'll want to check is the LCD monitor's controls. There's usually a set of controls either on the bottom, the side, or the back of every LCD that allow you to change some of the monitor settings, such as refresh rates, uh, things of that nature, and fiddling around in there could help you fix the problem very quickly and easily. The next best place to check is the Windows display settings. Here you should try to adjust clear type text, change display settings, and calibrate colors. Every once in a while the settings here can be changed by either the user or they may just need to be updated to fix the problem, uh, but fiddling with these can frequently help fix the problem fast. If the display seems to be not functioning at full capacity or tends to be glitchy and buggy, you might want to try updating the drivers, in which case you'll need to go to the developer website and check to see if there are any newer versions of the driver uh, that would be compatible for their system and download them to see if it fixes the problem. Another frequent monitor problem is dead pixels. Dead pixels appear as white, black, or discolored spots in the monitor, and unfortunately these cannot be fixed through settings or simply software. This is an actual defect in the hardware, and the only way to fix it is to replace the LCD or buy a new monitor. Finally, we have dim image. A dim image is where the brightness of the monitor slowly deteriorates over time. This is caused by people using the monitor past its intended lifespan. It can also be caused by some brightness settings in, the, in Windows or on the monitor to be altered. This problem could either be resolved in the brightness settings of either the monitor or Windows, or it could result in an entire new monitor having to be purchased. Finally, we'll talk about problems that occur with CRT monitors, or cathode ray tube monitors. CRTs are very prone to flickering. This occurs when the monitor's refresh rate gets out of sync with the computer's refresh rate. The only way to fix this is to alter the refresh rate on the monitor and or the computer uh, to hopefully realign it with the one on the other device. Uh, this could cause it to update and realize that it's out of sync and hopefully fix the problem. Another problem that happens somewhat frequently with CRTs is odd colored blotches on the screen. This occurs when some type of electrostatic force is being exerted on the screen and is causing it to kind of warp the colors or the shapes. Uh, what you'll want to do is look inside the computer to see if some sort of fan or any electrical device is near the screen that could be exerting this static electricity. One tool that you want to be aware of while working on CRT monitors is the DGoS button. It's not on all monitors, but it is on some, so make sure you look for it. This button allows you to drain, discharge rather, all of the static electricity out of the device and hopefully clearing up anything that might be messing with the cathode ray tube in the center. 
One thing to keep in mind about CRT monitors is that they do contain a very harmful dose of electricity stored in them. So if in, for any reason a customer wants you to repair their CRT and you're not comfortable with that, it's, okay, it's acceptable to tell them that you are not comfortable doing that and that they should probably just buy a new monitor because it, besides it will probably cost more to repair that monitor than it will be to buy a cheap new monitor. One final tool to keep in mind while doing any monitor repair is VGA mode. This mode allows you to restore the, the monitor to an analog only mode and analog is a much more forgiving signal. It's much less, it has fewer requirements and so if there are errors and you can't see anything on the monitor you can restore it to VGA mode and it will likely allow you to at least see what's going on on the computer and maybe fix it from there.